Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this one-off tutorial, we're trying to build a very simple application. We're taking that in Python. Alright, so we're building a registration application called Registrio. So there's a CLI, and it is the GUI version of it. So let's see what this app can do. So if I go to the home, I can just enter in the name. So let's say the name is Peter. Then the last name is J. Paris. Then I can search. I can create the email. So Peter JC at gmail.com then the age can be 23 and then i can use set the date of birth right so let's give the date of birth and let's say this particular value right just an example then you can give the address so let's say london transfer london something like that right then london i can spell london then you can just put in any number for the telephone number okay so in case i want to add it i just go with add then it's going to add it perfectly. You see that submitted to database is very interesting. So this is the detail that was submitted. I can clear everything and I can also clear the result. Perfect. So in case I want to view what I added, I just go to the view option. Then I'll click on view. It's going to give me the option of seeing all the things that I've typed. So these are all the things in our database. Very interesting. And again, I can also search for it. So in case I want to search for something, it's just going to be, let's say I want to search for Jesse. See if I go to search, now it has given me the value. Right, the details very interesting. So, I have the search and I can also clear the result. Very interesting. So, in case I want to save this stuff I had here, right, I want to export it so I can just export it to CSV or to Excel. So, if I just let me give it a name, so let's call it as my new DB, right, my new DB, right, then I just go to, to CSV. So, export it as new DB. So, if I check back, so I have my new DB, right, perfect. So that is how to work on it and I, I, even if I open it, it's going to open it in a very nice simple way with my data. So let's see what it's going to give to us. Perfect. So it has opened it in a very simple way for us, right? So see that our data has been opened. The only option is with these particular values, but we work about it. Okay, so let's start building this particular app. So that's the app we'll be trying to build. So let me position it well, I'll put it here, and then let's start with it. So first of all, to, to work with it, let's go with this option. I'm going to create a file and let's save this file as registry, right? So registry GUI.py. You can give it any name that you want. Perfect. So that is the name of the file. Let's go with this. Now let's start with it. So let me do this. So first of all, this is what you're trying to build, right? So we're going to create four different tabs about export, search, view, and then home, right? That is about five different tabs that we need to create. Then you have to start creating them one after the other. So now let's see how to do that. So it's going to be like this. So we're using Tkinter. So I'm just going to import Tkinter. So it's going to be import. Sorry for the noise. That to be coming from my keyboard. As Tk, right? That is going to be the thing that to be important. Then let's you can also import everything so tkinter from tkinter import everything right perfect now let's see how to work with it so the first thing you're going to do is that we need to be able to create our window so let's call it as window let's go to tk right you can record it as root if you want so tk right that is going to be the structure and then the layout Right, so this is going to be our structure and then layout. Right, so we're going to go the layout first and the structure first. So we then let's set the title so window the title. Then let's give it the title. So registry like mysterious, right? <laughs> mystery good. That's going to be the title. Then let's set the geometry to so window dot geometry. Then let's give it the particular geometry that you want. So let's go with 750 by 450. Right. Perfect, right? Then the next thing we need to do is that we need to we have been able to create the window, right? The geometry. So we need to be able to create a for loop, otherwise it's not going to come. So let's call it as window dot main loop. Then 
that is up right so let's save it and let's run it and see so i'll be using terminate terminal so that's it so let's call it as python then registry so let's open it perfect now it has opened it perfectly for us so now we have our app working so we have the name here and then dimensions right very very interesting okay, perfect so now let's see the next thing we can do so the next thing that we need to be able to create all these individual tabs here right so let's see how to create these individual tabs so everything is going to be in between these two stuff so to create the individual tabs we'll be using the normal format right so first of all we need to be able to import some interesting things to enable us to be able to do the individual tabs so let's import that one so let's only from ctenter import ttk right to help us with the style that's going to give it to us to give us the particular styling that we want then now let's build it so it's going to be our style let's build style style is going to be our ttk dot style right fit then we start in passing our window then it's going to configure our style style dot configure for config then we pass in a particular stuff so we want to let left tap right so left left tap because dot on the left dot t note look right perfect so that's all we're doing for this then we need to be able to give it the particular position to so tap position let's go to west north right perfect so that's going to help us with our style to help us with this particular stuff that we have this side right that is the basic idea about it so yeah these things are actually notebooks if you do stuff ah, notebooks and we are positioning it on the left right west north right perfect so that is how we are doing it okay perfect so let's quit our tabs or our notebooks let's go to our tab layout our tab layout is going to be our first tab control and it's going to be our ttk dot notebook fit in a new pass in a window then the style right so window style the style is left notebook left dot t notebook so we are done with it So let's create our individual tab to our first tab so tab one it's going to be ttk.frame then tab control that's going to be the first tab then we're going to repeat this one for the rest of it so let me repeat these tabs so we have about five tabs so one two three four five so this is going to be two three four five perfect so we have five different tabs now let's move on to adding the tabs to notebook right so let's add the tabs to it so let's go down add tabs to notebook so to add tabs you know, let's on tab control the one we have there then we add it to it so add our tab one so the name of our tab one is going to be test the name of our tab one let's use a string then let's make it like home twenty space perfect. All right, that is going to be the name of our tab one, right? Then let's create for tab two and then tab three and then tab four. So tab two tab perfect so before we save it let's move on to the last one the tab control a particular location that you want it to be so that's pack then expand go to one i'm going to fill the entire stuff so good perfect so we are done so let's save it and see what we are going to generate 
So I'll run it again. Oops, I made a mistake here. Style has no attribute config, so let's change it from config to configure. Okay, perfect. Let's run it again. Perfect, now we have it. They're very simple, right? See that now we're having it as at the top here, right? Very, very interesting. Uh, we don't need it at the top, we can also put it at the top, but we want it at the side here, right? So let's see how to put these things at this side. Okay, Perfect. so I'm just going to change this one from style, left tab, because the spelling was wrong. Now, if I run it again. Perfect, now it's at this point, right? So that means that I, it was a mistake here, right? So left tap is going to change it to the left. So in case I make it right tap, it's going to push the entire stuff to this side, right? Okay, it's going to push it to the other side. Okay, that is the basic idea. Now let's see the next step we have, we have done, we can do. So we already have the tabs. So the next thing that we need to be able to create the individual list, right? We need to create this stuff here and then this one for this one. So let's see how to do that. So I'm going to create my first label. So label one is going to be our uh, label top one. Then our test is going to be let's call it as registrial group. Then let's pass in some pad. Pad x five. Pad y. Then let's set the grid to so label one dot gray. Then column, as we already know, that the first column is going to be zero. And then the row, we have done the first label. So let's do it for the remaining forms of label that we will be using. So I'll duplicate it. So we have created an individual label. So now let's see what we have so far. Perfect. So we have our view here. That's when you create the label. So the label is now appearing. So the first one was registration view. The second one was view. The third one was search, export, and about. Right. Perfect. So then that everything is working in a very simple way. These are the labels that we have so far. Now let's see some other stuff we can also do. Now we have the labels. And let's create the individual tabs. Right. The, these individual tabs. Here, this stuff here, the, the details, the things to fetch the information. So I'm just going to create it individually, one after the other. So let's call it as our main home. Then you also have for our D, then you have for our search, then you have for our export, then you have for our about. Right? So these are the individual types we created. So let's start. It's going to be our uh, L1, then let's use a normal label, then tab 1, right, because, because it's a first notebook, then test, it's going to give us our first name, first name, then you pass in the pad that we have, so it's going to be pad, pad S is going to 5, pad Y is going to Five, right? Perfect. So we have created our first part. Then let's place a grid. Then a grid is going to go with our column first. Column zero. Column zero. Row one. And just as to show in the diagram. So let's see if we can see what we have. So that we know that we are on the right, on the right track. So now we have it on the right track, right? So this is going to be the first tab. So that so that you can't find it in any of these tabs. You can only find it on the home tab, in the home notebook, right? So first name, the one that we type in. So let's 
add the entry to receive stuff. So let's put as F name. So for let's make an entry. So entry F name. Let's go to entry. Then I'll pass in my tab one for the first notebook. Then test variable. You create a test variable later. Let's let's name it so. This variable is going to be giving us f name row entry. Right, then we need to set the part, the width of it, so let's give it as 50. So we have created an entry point where we'll be placing our stuff, then we have to put this our entry in a particular grid, right, in a particular location. So row one then column one so let's see what we have so far let's create our test variable so f name right row entry string so you only receive strings right string variable Perfect. so this string variable is going to be attached to this test variable so whatever we type here will be automatically committed to string right so let's save it and see what we have so far Perfect. So you see that we have our first name, right? So we have to create for the second name, last name, and then all of these things. So let's let me copy it and paste because it's going to be the same. Perfect. All right. So I've copied it and paste. So the next thing, you see that it's the same thing that we did. The same thing we have our first name, label one, label two, label three. The same, same format, right? As you are doing. So just like we did previously. But let's see how to work with the dates of it, right? So to, to be able to allow us to have the calendar here, realize that there is a calendar here. So how do you do that? So you need to import TK calendar. So let's see how to do that. So I'm just going to go with TK calendar, right? To add it to it. So this is what I mean. This is the TK calendar that allows us you to do all this particular stuff here. To be able to select these things, right? Based on the year. So that's what we want to do here. So you need this particular package to enable us to do that. Perfect. So I've already installed it, so no need of it. Take a calendar. Now let's see how to work with this. I'm just going to put it on the top there. It's going to be from TK calendar import calendar and then date entry. Right. Perfect. So I've imported calendar from and date, date entry from TK calendar. Right now, let's see how to work with it. So if you go to the date column, this particular option, date of that column, you're just going to use a date entry. Then we're going to pass in our tab, our width, our test variable, which is here. Right. Then we're going to set the background. It can be any color, then a foreground color, can be any, then a border width, and then yeah. So this year is going to be the default year that you want to use, right? You want it to appear there. Then you're just going to give the location the position that you want to be. So let's run it and see. Perfect. Now it's working very simple, right? So if you go to the home, we have our first name, last name, email, then age, then we have our date column. Very, very interesting, right? Perfect. So we can have the address and then the phone number, which are just like the same ones we have. So if you go to the view, there's nothing here. So the next thing that's how are we going to add whatever we are typing here to our database? So let's see how to do that. I'm just going to create our buttons to add them to it. So let's create our first button. Button one is going to be button then tap. One then test. Test is going to be our add or submit can be any of them. Then we're going to pass in the particular width of our button, which is going to be let's say 12, right? Then we can give it the background color a particular color. So perfect. That's going to be our background color. Then our foreground color FG going to be so that's going to be a button for 
to add then let's locate it give it a position button one dot grid row eight right because the last row that we had was row seven so let's paste it as row eight then the column can be any column that you want so let's put it as column zero and let's add a pad x five pad y five right perfect so let's save it and see how to add a button perfect so now we see that our button has come yeah, right the button that we have has come now the button cannot doesn't do anything to so add the next button then you see how to add functions to it so let's move on and create another button it's going to be to clear stuff right so i'll duplicate this so change this one to two then two and then let's call this one as clear right to clear we are clearing the things at the top right perfect we're going to clear for our test then you can also create another button to clear the result that you may also have but before then let's create a display so that you know that what you have typed right so the display is going to be our tab one display and we're going to be using scroll test right so scroll transfer we will put it later Code test then pass in our tab one then the height of our school test tab one then our height let's give it as a height of let's say 10 right it can be any height but let's make it five perfect then let's locate it or position it Get it in a particular location, right? Or position, it, not locate it. <laughs> what kind of relation am I speaking? Column one, then we do the pad. Perfect. So we have created it one. So let's let me import the school test number so that you to work with it. So let's import that one so from tkenter dot pro. Test import or oh, nice perfect scroll test perfect so it's like you to work with our scroll test so let's also import our test message so for us, to allow us to send message right to give a dialog post of for the message that you are doing perfect now let's add our last button so I'll use this third one and change this one to three. Perfect. And this one is clear display. Well, let's say clear result. Okay, so let's save it and let's see what we have so far. Perfect. So we have some interesting stuff. So we have our result here, right? And our clear result and then the prayer is going to be but we need to change something because our add button has been well, covered right so let's change it from 8 to 12 and then the column here is going to be let's change the display to 10 right so i've changed the display to 10 so that you will to see what you are doing. Otherwise, it's not going to come. Perfect. Now it's working well. Okay, so now we have our first home tab row. So we have the place we are going to enter our values. Then we have the calendar we have inserted. Then we also have our add, then our clear, and our clear results. Very interesting. The next thing is that we're going to add functions to these ones, right? How are you going to add functions to these ones? So we will create the view, then you create the search, then the export, then the about, right? It's going to take some time. So let's see what we're going to do. I'm just going to create a view, then you add the functions later. So that becomes faster. So since these things are the same thing that you'll be repeating for them, so I'll just copy them and paste. 
that you do the rest later. So it's going to be like this. So label go to zero zero. It's go to let's say two. If I save it. Okay, so we see we have our home now we have our view right so view view very interesting now let's let me paste it so that it comes faster because of time so from here realize that the view had some stuff here right these ones here so we need to create this particular button then need to create this particular option right to be able to see what is there so let's see how to do that i'm just going to paste it so that it comes faster then explain it so let me expand it then let's paste it. Okay, so we have our view. So this is the view. So the basic idea is that we're just going to be importing tree view right from TTK, which we already had here. We had TTK here, right? So we're using tree from TTK to enable us to generate this particular option of selecting these things here, right? So that's the basic idea of the tree. So let's explain it. So we have our V button, right? Which we are just viewing everything here. We'll create this command later. And then we will also create our grid, our location where we're going to locate it. Then you the tree view. So the tree view just takes this option, it takes the column that you want. These are the column that you want to create. You want to create five different columns for the name, first name, last name, address, and all of those stuff. I'm going to show headings to show this particular headings right that I've not shown here. I'm going to reflect these ones here. So we have the tree dot heading, heading one, test name, first name, last name, then just go with address, age, then number, like that, right? So this is going to be just based on those things that you provide, right? So that's how it's going to be. So just can just apply these names there, phone number and all of this stuff for the tree heading. So the basic idea is that you're going to import tree view on TTK, create a tree, create a header, then you're going to position it in a look, perfect location that you want it to be, right? So let's save this one. But before we move on, let's do the one for the search, which is also going to be the same thing. So I'm just going to create a search view, right? So we can just call it as view1 or search view1 or just call it as anyone. So let's call that v1 or let's change it to search. We will search to create a, an entry just like we did previously then we just pass in the location very interesting then you're going to create a button just like we created previously button calling it as classic the same background foreground color then we're going to create a command right so these functions will create them later the same another button to create the result another button to search it then you're just going to use the scroll test that we did previously to insert the result that you're going to be searching for here. Yeah. Alright, so that's the basic idea for the search. Perfect. So let me save it and let's create our particular function. This function that we have. So to work with it, because we'll be saving all these entry into a database, we're just going to work with creating a database, right? Using SQL right. So I'm just going to go with our database stuff. So import SQLite, then let's import CSV, right, to help us with all of these things. So I'm just going to create a normal function to enable us to connect to our database. So to do that, this is going to be our con for creating a SQLite connection. So let's go to SQLite 3, let's use SQLite 3 dot connect. Then let's see with us data dot db. Right, so that's where we'll be storing everything. We are going to put a connection to that particular database. You see, we're going to put our quasar, con dot quasar. Then we'll be using this particular one to do whatever you want to do. So let's create our table. So df dot create table. We are creating a table. So let's see that. So c dot quasar execute. Then go to passing table. So it's going to be. Let's make it simple. So create table. If not 
a risk. Sorry for the noise. The name of this table is going to be user data. This data, then we're going to pass in the particular value that you want to do. So we are going to create a first name. The first name goes to the variable of test. The test, the data type is test. Then we go with our last name table. So perfect. So let's that is what you want to create. I think this function is going to help us create a table. The next function is how do we add data to it? So let's call that df.add data. So the data we're going to be adding is all these things that we have here, first name, last name that we have. So how are we going to add it? So it's going to be going to pass in all these particular variables that we have, first name, last name, up to here. So let me copy this one. I'm going to pass it here. Right. So that's what I'm passing there. So we take off the real, take off the test. So how do we do that? So it's going to be C dot execute. Then we're going to be using the normal SQL insert. So insert into our users data the particular value that you want. So we are inserting into it all these values that we have. Our first name and last name accordingly as you want it to be. Right. So we are inserting these ones there. So let me copy this once. So we are setting this into our table. And then we want to go with the value. So values. I need to create seven, right? So one perfect. So we are done. It's setting them there. Then we need to pass in the values. So I'll pass in again. So we are done, right? So this is the basic idea of inserting it into it. So insert into users table this particular fields, right? These values here. But this option is going to perfectly work without any issues. Then let's commit it to save whatever we have done. So C dot commit. Perfect, right? So let's not call it C, but let's call it com connection dot commit. See the case. Perfect. So we are done with adding data. So in case we want to view all the data, we're just going to go with df.view all users. Then let's see how to do that. So using the normal SQL select, so it's going to be our c.execute. Then we we'll create our SQL function. So we we'll select all from our users data table that's all so this is going to allow us to get everything then we need to see that so data is going to be c dot fetch fetch all then let's store the fetch, all the stuff into some basic for row in data we can actually insert it into tree so tree the tree that we have here so we realize we had tree here we had tree here right so we are trying to insert it into this particular tree here right so tree dot insert then we to use space so we'll be inserting it and we're going to go with our tk dot n it's it to the end of it then let's pass in our values let's go to our row which is coming from the top here right so that is the basic idea about inserting it there perfect now we have, we have we know how to add data we know how to view it okay so we have our quick table we have our add data then we have all view all users right so the next thing we need to do is that we need to be able to know how to search from these things so let's see how to do a search right then we'll be done with our sql stuff so let's go to df dot get single user. So we'll be passing in the first name. That's what we need to search. So first name. Then we'll go with C 
c.execute and I'm going to pass in the particular set that you want to get. So we're going to be select all from users data where first name is equal to the particular set you want. Where first name is equal to let's put dot format first name. Perfect. Right? So that is a basic idea. Then you're just going to use a new same stuff you had. Data let's go to C dot fetch or to get a result, then you're going to retain that particular result, right? You can just go to return data. Perfect. So we are done with how to get a single user, how to view all data, how to add it. Now let's create another function to help us. These are just for SQL stuff, right? To get access to the database. Now let's see how to create another function that is going to interact with our ticket front end and then our database, right? Using this particular function. So I'll just paste them so that it becomes faster because that you are taking a lot of time. So these are going to be the other functions. So let me paste them here, then I'll explain it, right? Perfect. So we have a function to clear everything. So we realize that we had an entry. We had all these entries that we had here, right? One, two, three, four, five. So we have first name, last name, email, each, date of birth, address. So we'll be using this particular option entry name delete.0 to clear whatever turn that is there. Right when you click on clear test, you want to clear all of these things. Perfect. Now to add our values, when you click on this particular function of add details, we are going to be receiving all those things that you type here using the particular entry dot get. Right? Don't put one here, put zero here because yeah, there are multiple entries. So we'll be using this particular option, converting them to string for our first name, last name, email, each date of birth phone number address then we will pass all these particular things that we received into our add data function which we created for the sql here so this add data but so we are receiving everything then we are passing them here Perfect. so it's going to add them to our database automatically so it's going to print the results this is going to be the results then it's going to insert this particular result into our display here this display so that we need to see what you are doing here Perfect. Now we also need to be able to tell the user that although the result has come here, it has been sent to the database. So we'll be using the message boss dot show info in a particular title, then the message submitted to the database. The message boss was imported here. Right? This particular option. Perfect. So we are done with that. Now let's see the next option. So we need to clear off this. We need to clear in case I want to clear the result. I want to create one, so I'm just going to go with delete, then clear this particular stuff, right? The tab display. Perfect. Now let's see the next option of the view, this particular view. So how do we do that? So let's save this one here. This is for the view, right? So let's see how to do that. So the view is going to be using the view or user that you have here. Then you're going to insert it to the tree that you created down here, as I already showed. Now let's see some interesting stuff. Let's see what, what you have done so far will work. Perfect. Now it is coming in a very simple way. So we have our home, we have our view, right? So if I click on this, that is operation select no, no such table, right? No such table called users table. The reason it's giving us this error is that we forgot to call the function to create it. So we forgot to call this create tables function, right? So let's call it in any of the places. So let me call it inside here. After this. So going to be our create table function. Perfect. So if I go with the create table function, now if I run it, it's not going to give us that error. Perfect. Now it's working, right? So we have it working well. So we have our view here. And if I click, there's nothing showing so far. And we have here. So let's add some names. So let's call it as Jess Recurves. See? If we see that now, just just giving us the pop up the message right submitted to the database while the value has been placed here. so i can clear it here it's not clearing then when we visit then clear it's clear of this 
Very interesting. Let's go to the view and see. If I click on the view, now the details that you entered has been shown here. Right, so that is showing here in a very simple way. I mean that this option home is working. This is also working. Now let's see how to work with the search. Right, how do we work on the search to the point that you can search something? So let's close this one. Let's see how to work with it. So we already have the function to get the single stuff to do the search. And then let's see how to work on the search option. So this is a search function, right? So just like the same thing we did, we have the label, and we have the search entry, the place to search for it. Let me show you so that you can see it. Right, we have the place to search for it, which is the search entry, and we have the search button, right? So this button, we have one to clear, one to search user by name. So we need to create this particular function, search user by name. Because that is the one for this particular button to search. We have clear search, then clear result. Then we also have the display, tap to display. You can use list box if you want, but let's use scroll test, right? So it's going to be inserted here. Perfect. That is going to be for our search. Now let's see how to add this particular function. So I'll copy these particular individual functions of declare, entered search, clear display, view, then search user by name at the top so that we have to work with it. Perfect. So this is it. So we have our search user by name. So we have our first name, right? Then we can get the results. We can also use this particular option of getting it, right? Can use this particular option of getting it without using that function that you created at the top here without using this particular function i can just do it directly but let's create a function to make it easy and simple right perfect so we're going to insert the result that you're getting into our table display right tab to display tab to display then you have our clear view so we're just going to use delete one to delete the particular cool test view that's why we are using 1.0 then this is entry to delete the entry search from here right this particular entry search so that is why we are using the right perfect now we have this particular version one two three perfect. so let's save it and see whether it's going to work for the ones we are doing so far sorry for how the tutorial is going because there are a lot of codes then i'm trying to make it as organized as possible perfect so let's see so far but we have our view so we we'll click on it it's now coming and let's go to the search so let's search for jesse then let's click on search so that's first name it's not defined because we spelled it wrong <laughs> we spelled first name wrong so let's change it to first ah see that is first name so let's run it again the first name is wrong. Perfect. So let's see how it's going to be. So go to the search. Let's go with Jesse. Then let's go with search. Voila, now it is coming. So it's working perfectly. So we can click on the clear search, that's clear. Clear result, that's clear. Very interesting. So we are almost done with most of them. So the next thing that we need to do is to do the exporting format, right? How do we export it? So to export it, I'll paste the code. And explain because it seems that it's getting too lengthy. So let me paste it here. So it's just going to be the normal labels you have been creating. Perfect. Then you're going to create an entry file to get the name that you want to give to the particular file we are trying to export, right? How we want to save it. I'm going to create another function called export as CSV and then export as SLS, right? And we'll be using CSV to do it. So we have a button for that, and we're going to locate it in a very nice format. Fit. So that is it. So let's create this particular function of export as CSV and export as SL, XOXL. So we'll be using CSV that you already imported. Rather than we imported, we put CSV here. So we're using that particular CSV to convert our SQL data into CSV. Right. So let me copy the function here. Okay, so we have export as CSV function. So this is the file name that you are getting from the file name that you had. Then we are, we are creating a new file name to use, right? So we're going to pass it there. I'm using CSV writer to open it, right? Open a file, the new file that you have created. Then we're going to insert these values, the result that is coming from the select all, into our 
csv file right using the right rule so we have the column names right perfect with the right rule then the right rules to insert all the data there then we're going to show a message was to show that we have actually imported or exported the particular data into a particular file right again we will be using csv right up then we will is use sqlite to select everything from the user database put inside the particular variable called data write the rows with the column name column header then insert every data into the csv file that you have opened we're going to show a dialog box showing that we have exported it perfect so that is the basic idea for the excel you can also use the same thing or you can use pandas to do that but let's just do for the csv but let's just do it for only the csv right so let's see how it's going to do so i'm just going to run this as we have again Okay, so let's see so it's put now perfect is working so if i give it a name like let's say my db db right my db so if i go with to save perfect so exported as my db.csv perfect so time that we have aim to do the home aim to do the view to view everything perfectly working we can add some values there so let's call this poem peter pp at gmail at home then let's use a value then let's say heaven <laughs> then some numbers right? so let's go with add if it has been added okay so if i go back to my view i click on view now we have it here all right so the, the next option is how do we make it sure make sure that it's only one so that's one of the things you can do so try and solve it perfect so if i go to the export i can export it as two then two now that been exported perfectly so that is the basic idea about this so to do the about you're just going to create something very simple so let's see how to do the about about is not difficult so i'll copy that one and paste it there because it's not difficult perfect so the about is just going to be a label then the particular label that you want then you export it as a grid so that's a basic idea about this now let's go over again because it seems that there has been too much of it so let's make it quite systematic so the basic idea about creating an app is that we're going to import all the things we need from tick enter then we'll be importing calendar and date entry to help us with our dates then school test to help us with our school test then our messages right message board to do our dialogue we're going to import our db stuff and our csv then just going to create a connection to our database I'm going to create our table it's going to be this one here then after creating our table we're going to see how to add our details into our table right to our database then we're going to create another function to view all the stuff using the tree format then we're going to create another function to get a single user then let's see the individual functions we're also going to be using so we're using these functions here one two three four is for the database now let's create another function for the front end and this this place to be receiving these details so we have these particular co co columns right so not columns right rather empty spaces filled so we're going to be able to receive those things so we are creating a function to receive them so the first function we need is that we need a function to add these particular details there so to receive all these entries first name last name email each date of birth into their respective columns and we're going to pass it into our function to add it to our database Right, we're just going to insert it back here, right? Using the insert format. Then we're going to give a message or dialog box to show that we have submitted it. Then we need another one to clear all of these things there. So we created another function to clear them using delete format. Then also another one function to clear the particular screen using the clear result. Then we when we move to the next step, we had search to so create a function to search user by first name. So this is going to be the function that's going to accept the first name and the results we're going to pass in the particular first name into our get single user Perfect. so the next thing that you're going to just clear it with the display clear just like we did previously for the enter search and then one function that we also created was for the export we want to export it so it's going to be a simple function we're going to use csv to export it 
input get all the data from our users data table store inside a particular variable called data then write it as rows right perfect so this is going to be the structure the structure of our app it's going to be tkinta our geometry and our title and the style to allow us to be able to do our notebook of the tabs the individual tabs we have like these individual tabs so that's how we created this particular tab format here perfect then we also created we added it to our tab controller then we give it a particular position so we have to call our create table function to create our table if it does not exist then we created our individual stuff our graphic or oh, sorry our front end using this label so the label individual labels then we go into individual table so the main home we had the search entry for this individual one that we had which is all these plenty one that we put there it's quite plenty and then for our date entry we just use date entry to enable us to do our calendar stuff right to do the calendar stuff we just needed to import date entry calendar from tk calendar then we just use the same format to do that so created individual functions to allow us to accept it then display to help us with our display on these things for the view we're using tree view to enable us to do this particular view that we have right this nice view so we just use ttk dot tree view then we pass in our individual columns then you show the headers then we insert the data one after the other right based on these things so you can actually fill this one so we can write that then for the search we just use the normal search function of from the, from the sql sqlite search function in the spot we just did the same thing that we did previously by creating a labels then creating a function to spot it so that is the basic idea about this so thank you for watching this long tutorial in case you have any question or contribution i just put the comment section below and in case you need help in any of these aspects you can also let me know thank you and then please don't forget to subscribe Stay blessed.